What's up guys, my name is Michael Aris and welcome to my photography channel. I am here in my living room because I don't have a studio. If anybody wants to fork up $4,000 for me to get an office space, that'll be fantastic. But I guess the living room is fine for right now. In this video, I'm going to walk with you guys through all the images that I've taken in the last POV video. If you watched that video, you saw that I used a 35mm lens. And man, was that lens challenging. I love the 35mm lens. But as I said in my last video, I didn't like that I had to be that close to people, which can make things awkward because everyone's trying to pray and you're within three feet of them trying to get a good shot, all while trying to not ruin their worship experience. And even though I felt awkward most of the time, I'm still glad that I did it just to show you guys what you can capture with this lens. All right, so if you look here on my screen, these are all the images that I took here today, and let's walk through them. All right, so this is my first shot from the video. As you can see, it's just too far away. I don't like it at all. Let's just go to the next one. I don't like it mainly because there's just all this debris on the far left side of the platform. And this cross is amazing, but I think everything on this side kind of kills the frame. And of course the praise singers aren't really doing anything yet. Her hand's a little bit raised, but it's not way over here and her arm's not way over here. So as a whole, let's just skip that one. So I went closer and got to the drummer who's playing that cajon. And you know, decent side profile, nothing too special. I did crop out the legs a little bit, but overall I think it's just a decent image of a musician, especially since we have a little bit of death with the singers behind him. All right, so this next shot right here, it's not the greatest. His hand is a little bit lost right here in the background and his hand is in his pocket. Now, am I entirely proud about this image? Not really. In fact, it's probably one of the lesser quality worship photos that I've taken. But since we were all in the backyard and the floor was very spacious, and once again with that 35 millimeter lens, I didn't want to be all up in his face. So I kind of chickened out and used the mid-range level kind of shot. Mid-range meaning from the waist up. All right, so in this photograph, I tried to, you know, try to peek in through the people to go lead up to the musicians. I just don't like how this chair is empty right here. I would have preferred it if someone was actually sitting there so the place looked a lot fuller than what it actually was. And it's not a bad image, it's just not one that I'm crazy about. All right, here's a sad profile of the guitar player. He's got his mask on and he pretty much looks down at his guitar the entire time. If he lifted his head up, maybe this would have been a better quality shot, but since he didn't, we can just skip this one. All right, here is the back shot of the congregation. And I thought it might be interesting to try to get just the scope of how big the backyard was. The thing about it was that in this image, worship just started and I think people were just settling in and hands weren't really raised until about another minute after <laughs> this song started. But at that point though, after I took this image to try to get an idea of what it would look like, I wasn't entirely crazy about it. So I just decided to skip it. Here's a side photograph of a woman raising her hand. I think I had some more shots or stills, yeah. I like this image because you have the leading lines of the people from this person here, two, three, four, five, leading up to her. Her arm goes up, leading you to these light bulbs over here. And then once again, the light bulbs lead back down to this person, which leads to her. There's a composition concept that I like called triangles or rules of three. And if you look at this image again, as I just said, if we can start from this person with the yellow mask, lean all the way to the right, to the point right here, number one, her arm leads up here to the light bulb, point number two, the light bulbs lead over here to the far left, point number three, and it leads you back down to where this person is with the yellow mask. And it leads all the way back up to this person, and it's just a never ending cycle, like that. It's things like this that I feel are very subtle, but if you understand photography, and if you think differently as to where you want to use the rule of threes, your photography will dramatically improve. And for those who are not photographers, they will really enjoy this image, but without actually knowing why, but you know why, because you used the rule of threes. All right, another sad profile, the guitar player. Once again, I was trying to wait for him to lift up his head. He didn't do it, let's skip on. Now I was trying to do some light play here. Of course, she had the nice, beautiful sun peeping through, but she didn't really turn in my direction. I was hoping she would turn towards the sunlight ever so slightly, but she never did. She kept looking straight on at the audience, which isn't a bad thing, which is good. She's worshiping the Lord and singing. But from an artistic standpoint, I was really hoping to get that nice, beautiful contrast with the sun and the shadows. But you know what? I tried. Here's an image of one of the ladies in our church worshiping the Lord. I like this image because, you know, it's just a higher angle looking down on someone with with their arms raised and I plan anyways to crop this image about maybe, you know, about maybe here, just to make it look a little bit more flattering. But since we're doing our run through on these images, I'm not gonna edit them right now. But of course, now you, now you know what I was thinking when I photographed it. Now this right here, like I said before, wide angle lens, super hard to get close to the musicians. So what I tried to do was use 
the frame of one of the people that are sitting down to try to lead the viewer into the rest of the singers. So this is the foreground part of the image and then it draws you into these three people right here. Is it the best image? No, but once again, since it's so wide and we are limited to the tool that we're using, you have to be a little bit more creative to try to make your images look more interesting than what they actually are. These are images that I decided not to keep. Main reason being is because it is a decent wide shot, but there's just so much junk here against the wall. That, and also this black gated fence. I just didn't like it personally. I liked, I would have liked to have seen more stuff more from the back side as opposed to the side. Something more like this, you have the light bulbs on top right here of the canvas. You have our little gazebo right here, a better shot of the cross up in the back, and of course more people that are filling the seats to kind of give a much wider scope and feel of the service that happened that night. Yes, we do have some more of the junk here off to the far left, but it's so far to the left that everything else in the image kind of makes up for it. Now this with my 35 millimeter lens, I was really close to him and it felt pretty awkward. And I think that because I was so close to him that whenever he would do his motions like that, I felt that his hands would be cut off in most of the frames like in this one. Because I would be so close to him that whenever he would actually put his arm forward, it would just go out of the frame and I wasn't able to use any of these shots. Again, another wide shot right here. Not entirely crazy about it. Here's another shot off to the side. I think this is fine. Not too many things distracting this image. You have this one little line right here, but you can easily edit that out in post. And it's just one of those basic safe shots to kind of give a general feel of what happened that night. This shot right here, I went personally with a silhouette vibe, so this was intentional. And I won't really know in post how it's gonna look, but I just kind of liked the idea of having a silhouette of something. And of course, what better silhouette can you have unless it's a preacher preaching with their arms raised out? And I think I got that here. Once again, 35 millimeter lens, super wide, hard to get a great image of a speaker or a preacher. And as you can see, it kind of suffered from there. I tried to use the foreground to kind of lead up into him. But once again, all this stuff off to the side, very distracting, I don't like it. Same thing here. I got close to him when everyone was praying for the offering. And because everyone's eyes are closed, you can kind of sneak in and <laughs> try to get an up close photograph to him. But he was praying a little bit too intensely in these photographs and I didn't get a very flattering photograph of him. So I decided to skip out on these ones. Here's another side shot of someone praying. And I like it, you know, she's in the foreground and then there's leading lines of people in the back leading up to her. Very simple, but yeah, I think very effective. All right, here's another safe photo once again, just giving people a feel of what happened that night. It's a snapshot, but it's fine. It gets the point across. Once again, Pastor Dane was praying and I just couldn't get a flattering photo of him. I don't know what it was, but like I said before in my last video, the beauty about church photography is that a lot of the same speakers preach and or talk at least once every Sunday. So you get another opportunity to photograph them again anyways. So I can live without this shot being used. Here's an intimate moment of a mother and her son praying together. And as you can see right here with the 35 millimeter lens, if you look at her hands, because the lens is so wide, the closer that you get to a person and the closer that something is to the edge of the image the more elongated fingers or things get distorted on the sides right here so as you can see the fingers look a little bit longer than what they actually are and that's something you have to keep in mind when you shoot at very wide focal lengths this right here was just somebody praying on the chairs i opted out to skip out on this one because this was a praise singer that i photographed in my last video and I didn't want to show too many photos of the same person. I try to diversify the people that I photograph in each service, so that way it's not the same people every time. Now here's a side photo of Pastor Brother, and it's just a basic photo of him praying on a chair. I wasn't personally crazy about this image, or these images, so that's why I decided to skip on them. Because mainly it's just him praying on the chairs, but there's not really a greater context as to why he's doing that. And the scene around him is kind of bland anyway, so I didn't think it would be a very effective photograph. If anything, it would just make a regular person just think, okay, why is he just kneeling on a chair? Here's another photograph with the mom with her kid. And once again, with this 35 millimeter lens, you'll see just how long it makes her fingers look right here, the closer it is to the edge of the frame. Luckily in post, you can actually fix distortion in your images, but it's something you have to consider when you shoot wide angle lens. How much will it distort your images on the edges of the frame? But I do like this frame a lot and I would keep it. And right here is just a simple side profile of somebody praying. I like this photograph because he has his hands folded in prayer. He had the woman praying in the back, giving some depth to the image. And of course she had these light bulbs leading their way to our subject right down here. Here's another photo that I attempted to take of Pastor Beller praying on the chairs. I was trying to go for a low angle. 
but it just looked more like he was in pain or something like that. I don't know. I wasn't, you know, there's, it's really tough because he's just praying and looking down and I didn't think it would look that flattering of an image. I tried being creative with it, but not everything you do that's creative ends up working out and I'm fine with that. All right, here's a photograph of someone praying next to the cross. I tried getting a high angle of it high. I tried getting a high angle from the cross looking down. The problem is, is that she's praying with her face toward the wall right here and she's not doing anything else. If maybe she was on this wall facing towards the cross, maybe with her arms raised, it might be a more effective photograph, but because she's just aiming at the wall with her hand on the wall, it doesn't really say much and somebody might assume that they're not even praying. So for that reason, even though I was trying to be extra creative with this cross, ultimately I decided to let it go. All right, and those are all the images that I took from the last PLV video. It wasn't as many keepers as last time, but I think that I got a couple of decent ones to hand off to our graphic designer if they wanted to use some for our church flyers. And that's all that I have for you guys here today. If you are a church photographer, I would love to see your images. If you want me to give you my thoughts on your church photography, send me your stuff at michaelarisphoto at gmail. Now in the next video, I'm actually going to edit all the ones that I thought were keepers. So if you're interested in that, I'll see you in the next video. Oh,